Well, it's good to be back in the House of the Lord this morning. Uh, told some of you this morning, but uh, I, I had a blessing this morning when I went out to feed my chickens. I beautiful rainbow I believe I've ever seen in my life. And uh, Amen. I lasted for several minutes, and I just sit there and praise the Lord for it because, uh, you know, that's one thing that uh, uh, he said, that, and, and you know, he's still, he's, still, he's still on the throne because he said, put that there to remind me. Amen. And so uh, that's, uh, he's put the Holy Spirit in your heart to remind you how much he loves you. Amen. Amen. But anyway, we want to we want to teach some this morning in the book of Hebrews, in the in the chapter six, of the book of Hebrews, and it's a uh, very I'm uh, sure very familiar scriptures with all of us. And uh, but the writer of the book of Hebrews is uh, writing these letters to uh, uh, tell them some of their faults and uh, how that they can be closer to the Lord. And uh, we see here in verse 1 of, uh, of uh, chapter 6 of the book of Hebrews, it says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of, of perfection, not laying again... No, let me read again. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Now a lot of time we, uh, people that are not, uh, have a desire to understand uh, like they should, will not study this and, and, and really understand what the writer is saying here, but he is not talking about leaving anything out that is important to God principles here that he's talking about, therefore leaving the principles is the beginning of uh, God's uh, work with a, with a new Christian. Now notice this, this uh, perfection, it means in this particular case here, I believe, a full age. Now the reason I'm saying this is if we if we would look at the uh, chapter before this, uh, the writer here is talking to them about something something about a new uh, a new babe in Christ, and so he says in verse 11 of this chapter of five, it says, uh, "Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing." For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Notice this, again. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong milk, of meat. So we see here he's saying leaving these and uh, what we see here is the picture of a newborn babe or one that's a toddler and they are having to use milk as their main diet. And uh, uh, the milk is good to uh, help them grow, but eventually the milk is decreased and the stronger foods are uh, given to them to strengthen them. And here's what the writer is talking about here in verse uh, 13. Notice, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful Amen. in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So here he's saying to us this morning and to those that are young Christians, hey, you need to get a little bit farther out into the water. You need to test the water, get out farther. You need to study your word, the word of God. You need to be strong in the Lord and you need to be able to take on something a little bit more than milk because Amen. it says here, here for every, uh, for every, well in, in verse 14, but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. And this Amen. full age carries the thing of perfection. See, so this meat belongs to those that are 
that have studied in God's Word, they have trusted in God, they have prayed, they have uh, studied their Word, they have uh, <coughs> been witnesses, they have visited and, and attended church and things of this nature. This is what he's talking about going on to perfection or building yourself up to be a strong Christian for the Lord. And so there's nothing here in this scripture that is saying that we need to quit anything that God gives us, but, but we need still a little milk every once in a while, but we need a lot of strong meat and, and, and to, to strengthen us. So here we see this here in, in verse uh, uh, in, in Hebrews, I want you to turn over to Hebrews 9 just a minute with me. And we're going to look at chapter, uh, uh, verse 14, chapter, chapter 9 and verse 14. You see, if you see here, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Amen. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance for we for where a testament in my, is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator and he's going on to tell us this and in, and then in i will read you one other thing in, in 12 i'll get to that one in 12 1 notice there he says wherefore Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, Amen. looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So here, uh, the writer here in in uh, 5 and 6 here is, is encouraging these people uh, uh, to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and to be stronger in the, in the Word. And uh, I noticed here as we were reading this, who sat down at the right hand of the Father. And so many people don't understand that the Lord Jesus Christ is there at the uh, Father's right hand making intercessions for us when we pray to Him. And listen, you can depend on these things and you know sometimes we get in a hurry about asking the Lord, well, we want you to do this or we pray and ask that you do it. And listen, uh, it takes time sometimes for these things and it don't take time for God, but it does for us. Amen. We need to be more appreciative of God's uh, work that He's doing for us and the blessings that He's blessing us with. But we, as God's people, need to have that patience that we can endure a waiting period and see His work take place. But here again, we want to we want to get back to our lesson in chapter six. So He says here, laying not laying again the foundation of repentance. And this is one of the problems with a lot and lots of church going people that think that they can be saved and then that they can be lost and then that they can be saved again. And some will even tell you that I have been saved two or three times. Mm. And uh, the, the, these, the, they believe this. But listen. What they don't understand is that they're putting God to an open shame. Right. Because they, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for us. And He did it one time, and that's all He's ever going to do it because it was sufficient. Amen. He lived here some uh, 30 years here uh, on this earth, 33 years, and He, 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 he did what... His father wanted him to do. He didn't. He didn't skip a jot or a tittle of anything. He did it perfect. And so when he went to the cross, 
one time is all that was required for him. Not like back in the old days when they, the priest had to go in. And it, we read this here where that the priest had to go in uh, every year and make an atonement for the sins of Israel. And he had to carry the blood in for himself also, typifying that Jesus Christ did this one time where that the priest did it every year. But Jesus took that blood with him to present it before the Father and he placed it on the mercy seat of God and God said that is sufficient, Amen. that is enough. There will never have to be another death in your life. There will never, My son will never have to die again for the sins of the world because he covered it all. Whereas the priest, and we'll see here, the priest could not do these things. The priest could make an atonement that the sins would be rolled back. But listen, none of those people were saved by this, this uh, work that the, the priest did or the offerings that they made. Right. It was, a, it was just a rollback until this precious blood here could be shed. And the Lord Jesus Christ could cover that also. And He covered the whole thing. And even He says that He went there where they were at in Abraham's bosom and preached to them. And they uh, followed Him out. So here again we see that and not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. And of course the dead works typifies and, and points to the law. The law could not save. The law, all the law could do was condemn. All the law could do was say you're not supposed to do that. It was the schoolmaster's way. And, and it, was, it just said, hey, you don't do that. If you do that, you die. And of course, the thing of it was that the, this is where the priests come in to make the atonement until such time as Jesus could come. So this is the, the writer is writing this and he says, uh, and and uh, 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 not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. And so again, you know, people say, well, I, I trusted God again for my salvation. Listen, that is not, they don't understand. They're, they're still on that bottle of milk. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what they're doing. And so... Uh, there's a world of them out there, and, uh, and and I know I know people that I I know people that I've talked to, and they just they yeah I've been saved twice, and I've baptized two or three times, and listen they're they bringing all that in. So notice here, in verse two of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on and of laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. He says go on from that because listen. These things here, the doctrine of baptism, we know what the doctrine of baptism is. It's not for salvation. Amen. It's for identification. And Jesus pointed that out to us in the, when He come on the scene where the John the Baptist was baptizing. And, and John said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away all the sins. And he wanted John wanted Jesus to baptize him. He said, not now. But he says, I have need to be baptized. John said, I have need to be baptized. You. But Jesus was baptized not for salvation because Jesus was perfect. Amen. I know that. But he was baptized because John said, behold the Lamb of God. This baptism identified him as the man that would die for the sins of the world, be buried and be resurrected. Uh, and, 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 and the sin of the Father. So here he, he calls all of these things off and he says, and this will we do if God permits. And that is to teach other doctrines. But the thing of it is, this morning we know, we know not to teach that Jesus Christ had to die uh, and come back and die and come back and die again for our salvation. We know that because we have studied the Word, we have got away from the milk, and we're on the meat. And so this is some of these things that, that he's writing here, because notice what the, the uh, verse 3 says. And this will we do if God permits. Now notice, but for it is impossible... For those who were once enlightened. Now this, this is salvation. Enlightened is salvation. Because that's what happens is that the darkness is carried away and the light supersedes the darkness. Amen. And you're saved. Your soul is saved. So he says, 
For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come. Now, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put Him to an open shame. Right. And so he says this, the writer here says it's impossible for a person that is saved by God's grace to fall and be damned and right. to die and go to hell. He says it's impossible. And he says here, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. You, they, they need to be, they need to be, they need to make the, that uh, 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 apology or to the church or something like the, of the sin that they did. But that sin that they have done is not a spiritual sin. It's a fleshly sin and the flesh is lost as a goose anyway. Right. And this flesh is going to sin regardless of what you say or what anybody can say. And I've heard them say, hey, it's been 20 years since I've sinned. Well, they're still on the nipple. They're mm -hmm. still sucking the bottle. They don't understand what they're saying. Amen. They don't understand. And the chances are that they have not been truly saved because, uh, of course, I'm not putting my judgment on them, but that's, that's to me, is the way that the fruit looks. But anyway, but here he says, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, afresh, and again, and put him to an open shame. And so this morning, if you if you have friends or if you have people that you uh, know and they tell you, well, I've been saved three times down there at the church. Well, you know, you know that they're they're mixed up. You know that they don't know what they're talking about. You know there's a difference between losing your salvation and sinning in the flesh. Right. Because listen, John says that that which is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. And right. that's talking about the spirit that was in us. And then this is the old tabernacle, the old fleshly tabernacle. That's the boy that's doing the sinning. And listen, it never was saved to start with. Right. And it won't be saved until it dies and is buried and is resurrected. And when it ascends out of that grave, then it becomes a glorified body. It's changed in a moment and it's, 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 it's free of that sin of unbelief. And that only then is when the, when the flesh is, uh, is saved. And so here again we see if, uh, in, in verse 7. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessings from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, right. and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. And that's got to be none other than those that think that they've been saved two or three times and they're deceived right people, when, when people think that they've been saved more than one time they're deceived right and i don't know I, and god only knows what, uh, what what's going on in their life but listen they are deceived mm -hmm. and they have been taught by some sharp tongue evangelist or preacher he might call himself listen that you can be saved more than one time and they've been told a lie they've Amen. been told a lie so here and they said he's identifying these things here uh the briars and and, and the uh the rain and of course we know no for the earth which drinketh in the rain grace that comes off upon it and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessings from god that's your works. That's your the rain is a typifying of grace. And listen, that's the same. But notice, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, 
and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation through though we through thus, thus we we thus speak. So for God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love which ye have showed toward his name, in that the in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Amen. And he goes on here and tells us some of the things about being slowful, about lazy, about not not doing good works for him. He says, and here in verse 12, that ye be not slowful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. And so these things here are some of the things that that we uh, we need to understand. And uh, I want to I want to read some more if I can if I can uh, in First Corinthians. I want to read this to you, uh, and I know you've read it, but I want to read it to you again. Uh, if I can find it real quick, like First Corinthians, First Corinthians three. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. Notice here. Verse 3 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, right. but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were able to bear it. Neither I have fed for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one say I am of Paul and another I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Right. And of course, they're not giving Christ the praise here. So, so who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted Apollo water, but God gave the increase. Amen. So here again, these are babes. These are uh, the type of people that uh, are, have feels they're, they're all over Stewart County, mm -hmm. and they believe that uh, they can die or they can lose their salvation. And uh, then they can go for 10 years or whatever and they can be saved again. And we know this morning what it takes, what the atonement was for a saved person. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And this morning, if that were possible, if that were possible, Jesus died on the cross for a lost cause, mm -hmm. unless you know, there's no, there's no, there's no thought to it. There's nothing, nothing stable about a thought like that because Jesus Christ was perfect. His blood was perfect, and when He placed that blood upon the mercy seat, He said, "It is finished. Amen. It's all over with. I've done what I, I said I would do, and that blood is the atonement for that sin." But if one can fall from that, then that blood was wasted. And we know this morning that Jesus Christ's blood was not wasted. Not nary single peony drop. Amen. It just was not, it just didn't happen. And so these people that think that they can be saved and lost and be saved again, I think that they ought to go back to the beginning where they were saved the first time and find out what happened to them. Amen. Because listen, there's a lot of people this day and time will tell you, yeah, I'm saved. But listen, they don't know for sure what they're talking about. Uh, a lot of them have had an experience, but it was one of these things where that somebody told them how good it was, or and said all you have to do, and then Brother Larry brought it out time and time again. All you have to do is just to repeat this little prayer, or uh, do this or do that. But listen, so many of them, so many of them, and, 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 
and them being that weak, right, then they can fall for being lost again and uh, being saved again. And so uh, this is just a little something I thought would be uh, 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 encouraging to you. And uh, you might be able sometime or another uh, to be a, you might meet somebody, God might use this with you. Uh, and they make the statement that they've been saved twice. And if they do, if you can do it in a uh, uh, Christian attitude, say to them, you know, and try to tell them and explain hey, to them. If you, if, you, if you can't remember Hebrews 6, and uh, you might turn your Bible over and read a little to them, and you never know, it might, it might, it might cause a thousand people to be saved. Uh, that might just carry. That might be a, a place that that God would take and use this person, and and he could he could be used again and again. And again. So, uh, what it's worth, what you 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 think upon this thing because it's 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 a dangerous it's a dangerous sort of thing, it's thing in the world to think that that you can be saved and lost and saved and lost. Right. And uh, so you know people. People live all their life. Well, I just uh, uh, I do that. I just uh, I just wait till uh, I start my last breath, and I say, "Lord, save me." <laughs> you know, uh, right? And uh, every time we say "fall," God don't hop. You're right. So that's the lesson for today, y'all. Thank y'all for praying for us, and uh, uh, continue praying for us. Amen.